plan for today is we're going to Brooklyn and we're going to meet Shannon. So we're making our way through the Oculus at the World Trade Center. Check it out. It's stunning, isn't it? So Shannon struggles with uh, subways, so we're going to maybe ride a few stops with her and see how she gets on using the tools. And yeah, really looking forward to going out and meeting Shannon. <laughs> Shannon, thanks for meeting me. So, yeah, absolutely. Welcome to Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, and we're sitting out here in the rain because I had this idea. I thought this would be like an iconic shop. It is very, like, this is called Brownstone Brooklyn. Yeah. So this is where you kind of get those Brooklyn facades that really feels like you're in New York City. So, um... Yeah, it began with panic attacks while you were very, very young. Mm -hmm. I was about two or three, and I remember it felt like snakes going through my body, um, which maybe was hyperventilation or something, I don't know, or overstimulated system. But I was afraid of snakes, so I told my mom it felt like birds, which didn't quite translate to what was really happening. Um, but yeah, that's when it started. And then... I suppose in your teenage years, it morphed yes, into something Yes, teenage years else. morphed into more actual intense panic attacks, more consistent, more of those typical fears of choking, fears of heart attacks, um, lots of trips to ERs and therapists and social workers. And then, um, you know, there was nothing that really explained it. It would be little bursts of things. And then when I found D.A.R.E., um, it just opened up a whole new approach and a whole new look at it that was the opposite of fighting, which is what I had been doing. And that's the difference, isn't it? In, that, in the approach is, it was resistance and management yes. up until then. It was resistance, it was don't look at it, don't acknowledge it. A lot of that magical thinking mm. that sort of came into it that was like, if you don't look at it, if you don't talk about it, if you don't acknowledge it, it won't come in and take over. Rather than making peace with it and, and making it like someone who was really actually on your side, which intuitively, makes so much more sense. It's not your enemy, it was there to protect you to begin with, and now you figure out how to work with it and calm it down, yeah. so it doesn't feel the need to jump in and protect. So it's just, it's, it makes so much logical sense yeah. that it, it makes it so much better. And you took a flight there recently. I did, I took a flight, which had been about 10 years, and there was so much anticipatory anxiety going into it and a lot of um, chats with the folks in D.A.R.E. of how to do it, and it just, um, all the anticipation, all of the build-up, once I was on the plane, um, it all dissipated. And the, I was able to go through the tools. I still have my original bracelet that you guys had, the red yeah, dare yeah. bracelet. And I wore that for a very long time, and that really helped, too, <laughs> getting through that, yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, those, we gave out those bracelets to inspire people, you know. It works, yeah. yeah, it really works, yeah. <laughs> and, okay, if you met somebody who suffers from anxiety now, what, what would be your message to them? I would say um, check out D.A.R.E. Um, for sure, number one. But I would say stop. The lesson is to stop fighting it and accept it um, and know that it's not out to get you or hurt you. Um, it's there to help, and you just need to make friends with it yeah. and allow it to do its job, but not allow yourself to be so affected by it, Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, that no, makes sense, perfect sense. So. Subways are still a bit of a challenge though, right? Yes, definitely. They're, they're a challenge for any New Yorker. <laughs> Do you want to ride a few stops in the subway? Not really, but I will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, maybe we'll do that. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> maybe. Well, here we are. Subway station. Here we are. <laughs> so I'm going to leave you here. All right. And um, <sighs> I'll let you... Looks daunting. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, yeah. How do you feel at the moment? The anticipatory anxiety is coming and the sort of doom and dread, but I feel like it's necessary. Well, after you. All right. <laughs>
So hello. <laughs> hello, we're here. Yeah, fancy that. <laughs> yeah, it feels um more normal than I expected. Yeah. Like it reminds me of doing it when it wasn't so scary. Yeah, when it was your your normal commute. Right, but then there's that feeling of magical thinking that comes in that's like, oh, but if you relax, mm. then that's when something will go wrong. Yeah, but yeah. I'm still untraining myself out of. Yes. Yeah. Or trying to manage that kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah. It's but, that fear of like the boogie monster suddenly. Yes, exactly. Yeah. It's that same thing that, that dares I'm teaching me of like, don't sort of look at it as the enemy and that you have like, that your thinking will control the outcome. That's what I have to still untrain my brain with. Yeah. But right now, it's... You're doing great. Right yeah. now, it's okay. <laughs> and when I'm gone, you can keep going, can't you? You can come back yeah. again and do more. Yeah, more. my daughter would be very happy. Yeah. Let's continue with that. Yeah, it would be a lot less expensive. So. <laughs> yeah. Not less Ubers, maybe. Yes, Ubers. Ubers really do damage to your pocketbooks. <laughs> and this is also updated now. Now you have cell service and... Yeah. and yeah, we're, going. we're here. After you. Thank you. I've got all that uh, adrenaline. <laughs> yeah. And we go out this way, is it? Yes, I yeah. was like. And what part of town are we in now? We are just in Cobble Hill, still part of Brooklyn, just a little bit further toward the city. Well, well done you, Shannon. That was great. <laughs> yeah, getting back on it. Yeah. As you say, you get that rush as well yeah, after rush. doing something exciting. Yeah, that adrenaline <laughs> is pumping back. But it was fun. It was, it did go smooth. Um, it doesn't always. It's almost good to have it like go wrong. Yeah. To help you get used to it again. Yeah, yeah, to feel but, that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my daughter's going to be so happy to hear this and see that I, <laughs> that I did this and did not lose her Metro card in the process, so. And it's been seven years, hasn't seven it? Seven years, yeah. So this is gonna be opening up a whole new weekend adventures yeah. with me and her and, And it builds yeah. back that confidence, doesn't it? Yeah, the com I think it's just, and I think I have to remember to go and do it again tomorrow. Yeah. Because it's real easy to do it once and yeah, then yeah. go, okay, that was good. Yeah. It's the practice, I think, that the breaks the yeah. it breaks the anticipatory anxiety. Totally. Yeah. Good for you. Well Thank done. you. Thank <laughs> you. It's exciting. Yeah. Yes, this is one of my favorite spots in the city. It's like all of it combined. You have the water, you have the Statue of Liberty, you have all the views of the city, and it's it's just a great place to come and take in the city and also have some quiet. Yeah, it's lovely, it's peaceful. You know what I love? Um, the Statue of Liberty really represents freedom. Yes. And th that's what all this work is about. It's helping people to win back their freedom. And right. I saw today with you, you did it in a small step by getting on the subway and I could see that kind of sparkle in your eye of like stepping outside your comfort zone and winning back freedom again. Yeah, it really brings back this, it brings back this confidence that gets buried in you by the anxiety that you realize it's all still in you. You just have to bring it back out, but you still have it and and it's all worth it. Half the problem, I think, is we play it too safe a lot of the time. Yes. Not taking, not taking the chance. Mm -hmm. And um, I think people have so much more they can do. And you kind of proven that today as well. Or reminded, yeah. maybe reminded <laughs> yourself of that. Yeah, you gotta trust. I reminded myself to trust myself a little bit more and to not get in my own way. I think that's the key. You were also texting your daughter on the way over. Yes. <laughs> it's like family are so important to keep you motivated to yes. do this stuff. Yeah, she was very proud. She gave me a big hooray with lots of exclamation <laughs> points, which is not common from a 16-year-old. So that was true, authentic, I'm proud of you, Mom. So that was that also makes it worth it. You might take her on the subway this weekend. Uh, she would love that. So I definitely I definitely think that's a good idea and I'm I'm gonna put that on my list because I know I've gotta keep keep the momentum going. Yeah, well look, I'm proud of you. Well thank done. you, thank <laughs> well you. Done. You did a great job. Yeah. <laughs>
hundreds of thousands worldwide, to escape the grip of panic and anxiety. In this series, I'm in the US to meet 10 brave people to talk about their greatest fears. I found all that uh, adrenaline. Don't fear for your life, I'm a good driver actually. I don't want to be known as the guy that hurt you. <laughs> and how they dared to win back their freedom. No!